Welcome to the Revolution Church Podcast. Before we begin, we'd like to remind you that our ministry is supported 100% by listeners like you. To make your 100% tax-deductible donation today, please visit revolutionchurch.com slash donate. You can also learn more by clicking the donate section on the website. Well, hello, and welcome to Revolution. We are... Uh in the midst of our Galatians again and again study. Uh, You'll have to enter uh, new names when we do Galatians again. We'll have to have a Galatian name that Galatian study contest. Um, Because I think again, again, and again might get a little crazy. Um, Holiday seasons was here. The seasons, the seasons, the season has passed. It is now a new year. Um, took the took the new year's off but uh i hope you had a okay holiday i know holidays are a struggle for a lot of people um i saw my family uh, my in-laws and my laws got to see my dad uh, it was nice him and uh, my brothers and sisters and Stayed with my sister, Tammy Sue, and that was awesome. So, yeah, yeah, holidays were good, and then went and spent uh, the New Year's with uh, the in-laws and uh, all of the brothers and sisters there have kids about, we all have kids about the same age, so it's uh, it's a wild rompus at the uh, Abersold Inn. So we have a lot of a lot of fun there as well. But yeah, so holidays are over. Um, New Year has begun last year. A lot of people uh, uh, had tough years. Uh, I had a tough year, not just because a lot of my favorite celebrities passed or that the politics were strange, but last year was really tough for me because I uh, really was struggling with my mental health. And had some changes with meds and things like that and really affected me negatively as some of you I'm sure remember. And so I spent last year kind of trying to work that out, getting back to, uh, mental wellness. Uh, and truly as I like to do to, so I can completely overwhelm myself started, uh, going to, United Seminary of the Twin Cities, um, you know, just to add a little extra stress to my wealth, <laughs> my health and wealth, uh, well-being, I guess was the word I was looking for. But yeah, so it, it was a tough, tough year. And I have to admit, coming into this new year, I felt a little bit schemish, uh, sque- squeamish, not schemish, but squeamish, um, about the new year, just because, uh, last year, this time I was having such a hard time mentally and I really don't want to have to deal with that again, but the holidays always bring up, uh, uh, lots of emotions and seeing a lot of people being an introvert as I am, uh, all my family and stuff that also wears me out a little bit, but this isn't Jay confession time. This isn't get, get Jay's holiday weirdness off of his chest time. This is a revolution church. So I just wanted to share that with you and let you know that you're not alone out there. And, uh, if you had a great holiday, I had some great times too. Uh, man, I had a lot of fun hanging out with my sister. Um, she's a blast, but anyhow, let's, let's, we're in Galatians. Now I guess Galatians three would technically be the middle. Um, I call, I feel like four is the middle of Galatians. So I feel like we're in the middle now. Um, but we just got done dealing with uh, a couple of my favorite verses. So it's always interesting to move on after you, you pass your favorites. Now I'm getting into some interesting stuff that I really like. Um, two of the ones that we were, were in Galatians 4 today, but two of the ones that were in 3 were 3. 21 for if the law had been given for if a law that had been given could make us alive the righteous would indeed come through the law 
Now, of course, Paul's point is, is that righteousness, right standing with God, standing with God, doesn't come through keeping the law. Um, matter of fact, you know, he's dictated a lot of his letters. And so I feel like this is like he gets epiphanies every now and then. And we're able to see this because I feel like he's walking back and forth, which I don't know. But I feel like he's pacing as he tells us or speaks to the writer and uh, can 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 kind of have these moments of clarity. But my favorite here is in 328, there is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female for all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. So here we go into four. Um, straight from this amazing verse uh, about equality and about status not being in something that comes to our standing with God or Christianity, which wouldn't that be awesome if it actually was true here on earth? Um, unfortunately, Christians seem to often dig their standing and their status. Yeah far too much it's a trap it's a trap and it gets us a lot of us uh, in all different types of ways Paul goes on to say my point is this heirs as long as they are minors are no better than slaves though they are owners of all the property but they remain under guardians and trustees until the date is set by the Father. So with us, while we were minors, we would be enslaved to the elemental spirits of the world. But when the fulfillness of time had come, God sent his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children, and become, and because you are children of God, because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. It's like saying, Daddy. So you can no longer be a slave. So you're no longer a slave, but a child. And that if a child, then also an heir through God. And this is interesting because it says, but they remain under guardians up earlier and trust in the trustees until the date is set by the father. And then it goes on to say, so with us, while we were my minors we were enslaved to the elemental spirits which some would say actually is talking about uh pagan gods uh different gods and different types of spirits which is a very interesting conversation and would be an interesting sermon and maybe we'll have to do one um when we're not trying to focus on the whole of this letter but um it, it's interesting to to say the least of uh, just an offhanded comment by Paul but it seems also interesting that he may seem his old faith as well as an elemental spirit and uh, old religion. But he, he's also making it clear that, you know, this children of the slaves, you know, are no more than the slaves. But he, he's saying, you know, not only are we, him, a Jew, and, and Jewish people under the promise, and are not only are we heirs, but so are the non, you know, the Gentiles. They are also heirs. So are the, will be seen as probably slave children. But he really turns this whole thing on its head here in a minute. Go with me to eight. Formerly, when you did not know God, you were enslaved to beings by the nature, that by nature are not gods. Now, however, that you have come to know God, or rather to be known by God, how can you turn your back again to the weak and beagerly elemental spirits there? That is, again, there are months of spirits. How can you want to be enslaved to them again? So he's, in a way, saying going back to the law is like going back to what he would consider paganism or not Christianity or false faith. So I'm not attacking pagans here. I'm just using the words that were given to me uh, through my own studies. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
but he's saying you're returning to the different different idea you know by getting back to the law you, you know you're it's weak and it's a bigger burglary burglary elemental spirit how can you want to be enslaved to them again so we're slaves when we are under the law um He's on to saying, you are observing special days and months and seasons and years. I'm afraid that the work that I, that my work for you has all been wasted. Now think about this. Is he's saying, you know, when you observe special days and months and seasons as a religious, I mean, he almost is saying you become superstitious. Um, Paul Tillich talks a lot about how we can be uh, somewhat superstitious in our prayers and, and different things in our lives and faith and how superstition can creep in and we don't even know it. And I think in the same way, Paul, the apostle is saying, you know, here you guys, uh, you all are thinking you and you observe special days, observe special days and months and seasons and years, you know, that there's somehow superstitious that this will make you right. And it doesn't. Now, superstition is a strange thing to criticize when you're talking about faith, because some would say faith is superstition. So, uh, I am not, the uh, irony is not lost on me. But Paul says, I beg you to become as I am, for I also have been as you are. You have done me no wrong. You know what it was, you know that it was because of a physical infirmity that I first announced the gospel to you. So it seems that Paul was coming through Gaul and speaking to the Gauls in Galatia because of his sickness. Uh, what I think of when he talks about a thorn of his flesh was uh, some sort of physical issue. Uh, sounds like it was with probably his eyes, but um, there's all sorts of different people have all sorts of different theories and you can Google Paul's thorn or Paul's sickness St. Paul's sickness, and you can study that. It is fascinating. Um, but for now, that's not what we're here for. Uh, because I want you to think of this when he says, to friends, I beg of you to become as I am. And he's made it really clear, Paul's made it very clear that he is free, that he was tied to the law, that the law was his life. That's how he lived, and he lived it to almost to the letter, almost perfectly. But he was set free from that and now no longer lives by the law, but lives through Christ. And he's saying, I want you to be as I am, not as I was. Don't go backwards. Don't become something else. Now he's reminding the Galatians of his visit and that he was sick. And in 14, he goes, though my condition put you to the test. So it seems that he was very sick. You did not discorn. He did not scorn or despair me, but welcomed me as an angel of God, as Christ Jesus. What has become of the good will you felt? For I testify that I had it been possible you would have torn out your own eyes and given them to me. Now, this is interesting because obviously the word that's gotten back to Paul is, is things have gone awry in Gaul. The, with the Gauls and the Galatians uh, are have turned and not only turned back to the law but have said that they were deceived by Paul and this is ca causing Paul great distress and he asks here in 16 he gets to, you know after he had felt so blessed by these folks and been taken care of while he was sick but then he goes have I now become your enemy by telling you the truth they make much of you, but for no good purpose. They want to exclude you so that you may make much of them. So here he is confronting the people who've come in, um, causing this trouble. He's saying about these troublemakers, you know, they make much of you, but for no good purpose. They want to exclude you so that you may make much of them. Now hear this, you know. How often have we been excluded in our faith by people who wanted to feel better about their faith? They wanted to be leaders. 
They wanted control. Uh, maybe they wanted the limelight. Maybe they wanted that big spot. And legalism is very attractive to people who like control because it gives you control, you know, and you go, oh, well, I'm working on the behalf of God, so don't question me because I have control. And it often gives you a place, a position of power. And we see this so often, horribly, horrendously abused in the church by people who have nothing in their life, so they use God and they use religion and manipulate people into thinking that they have something that they don't, that others don't, some sort of special calling, some sort of, I don't know, it, it, it goes back when you go, there's neither Jew nor Gentile, Greek nor, you know, Jew nor Greek, nor male nor female, nor free slave, nor free nor slave, there is no longer male or female, for all of you are one in Christ. You know, it goes back to that earlier verse in 3, where he's saying there is no hierarchy. And what he's saying is, is these guys are coming in and creating a hierarchy. And they want you to think that they're really something by putting you in your place. And they want you to think of that, of them as wise leaders, because they've put you in their place. Paul's saying, I came to you broken, falling apart, and you took care of me. And the message I gave you was the message of grace. Why are you turning from this? So Paul is angry. now, And I will say grace can make people scared. The idea of an unconditional love or an unconditional accepting God. And people always want to put an and or a but or an asterisk. They're always looking to add that extra something. You know, grace is always for the people that we don't want it. You know, we're always looking for who doesn't get it. You know, even us liberal folks, you know, look at the the way we are right now with, you know, <laughs> politics and and uh, often how we play games and with social justice. And, and sometimes we get a little bit, some of us get angry and bitter and, and, and controlling and accusing and, and it happens. And it's not that it's anything wrong. <laughs> It's not that this is not that this doesn't happen. It's just human nature. It's human nature for us to kind of go back to this: who fits in, who doesn't. You know, when we're called to show grace to all people, when we're called to love our enemies, and it's very tough to do that. It's very hard to empathize with your enemies, and it's very hard to just realize that these people have had different life experiences and grown up in different ways. And seeing things different, and so they react to different things. And they react differently to the same things that we react to. You know, and instead of seeing people as victims of misinformation, we often see them as the enemy and uh, go on the attack. And I think that's uh, not what we're called to do if we are followers of Christ. I think we're called to empathize more. I think there is time to speak out, obviously, boldly. That's what Paul's doing here. He's speaking out boldly to the Judaizers who are coming in and saying that he wasn't a good Christian or that he needed to, these people needed to return to the law. He's confronting them. He's making a confrontation. So I'm not saying we avoid confrontation. But what I'm saying is, is that we be, be careful how we judge one another. And... Uh, be, a, be, be be weary of becoming an enemy of grace. Be weary of becoming an enemy of forgiveness. Be weary of being an enemy to love. Uh, that's one way I think we can all kind of keep ourselves into check. Um, that was one important thing that I know when I worked with Soul Force is that we continuously reminded ourselves of the principles of nonviolence and that we weren't committing violence even with our tongues or our thoughts or our hearts. And that was hard not to do when you're confronting people who you feel don't show love and respect to those who deserve it. You know, just because they're fellow human beings. So often that message of peace and grace is not one that makes someone very popular. 
it's easy to romanticize, but honestly, it's not always the answer someone wants or someone's looking for. It's good to be made much of for good purpose at all times, and not only when I'm present with you. My little children, for whom I am again in pain of childbirth until Christ is formed in you, I wish I were present with you now so I could change my tone, for I am perplexed about you. Paul is obviously angry, (laughs) perplexed. He doesn't want to be angry. He doesn't want to have this letter to be a tone of rebuke. But this is where he's at. goes on, Tell me, you who deserve to be subjects to the law, will you not listen to the law? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, one by a slave woman and the other by a free woman. One of the children of the slave woman, of the slave was born according to the flesh. The other child of the free woman was born through the promise. Now this is an allegory. These women are two covenants. One woman is in fact is Hagar from Mount Sinai bearing children for slavery. Now Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia and corresponds with the present Jerusalem for she is in slavery with her children. But the other woman corresponds to the Jerusalem above. She is free and she is our mother. For it is written, Rejoice, you childless one, you who bear no children, burst into song and shout, you who endure birth pains. For the children of the desolate woman are more numerous than the children of the one who is married. Now, I find it interesting is he said the law basically is the slave child, the one of the human act. He's saying the human act, the one that was trying to produce something, the one that was trying to push God's hand is the human act. That's the law, and we aren't to be seen as children of that. So he's kind of flipped it on his head rather than, you know, the obedient, you know, this, this the obedience being the law, but rather the non-obedience is, 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 is you know, the man's action, the trying to manipulate that's the law it's very interesting for him the way he kind of takes this and flips it continues to go on and says now you now you my friends are children of the promise like isaac but jesus just as the time the child who has born according to the flesh persecuted the child who was born according to the spirit so it is now also but what does the scripture say Drive out the slave and heir, and her. Chi- I mean, slive out the tra- slave and her child, for the child of the slave will not share in the inheritance with the child of the free woman. So then, friends, we are children not of the slave but of the free woman. For freedom, now I want to say this. You know, let's. The language here is not very desirable. The free and slaves. Um, and the Bible is not very great about slavery. So let's just get that right. Now, it's led people to realize that slavery is something that should not exist. But uh, within context of the time, it's not saying a lot of things I'd like to hear. But it ends strong, but it ends in five um, because this is a letter and how it's written. So we're going to jump to from four to five really quick. Five, one, um, For freedom of Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. Because what Paul's saying here is that the law makes you a slave. Religious tradition is okay to have, but as soon as it becomes about your standing with others or a people or with God, then it becomes the law and then it becomes something that's not worth having and it's got to be abandoned because we're looking for freedom in Christ to set us free, stay free. Don't get caught up to the yoke of the slavery of the law. Don't allow it to become a burden that you can't hold and that you can't carry. And I think it's clear that life is burdensome, burdens, has burdens and is burdensome enough uh, without the extra added of the law that we create or that we recreate in the church today. 
through legalism, self-righteousness, uh, being judgmental, uh, how we tear one other part, no matter what side we're on. Because it doesn't feel a whole lot like freedom, does it? And uh, but we're called to be free. Christ has set us free, so stand firm and therefore and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. So find out what that means to you. But know that grace is something that is a tough thing to accept. One's acceptedness when you do not feel accepted and sometimes are being not accepted, but you have to accept that that something greater than yourself has accepted you. And then it's hard to show that acceptance to others, especially when those others aren't popular people to love. And when your people will tell you that you're loving the wrong people, that's a tough one. But, uh, yeah, that's grace for you. I look forward to getting into the rest of, of the study with you. Uh, to be honest with you, Galatians 4 has always been one that's kind of been a tough one for me because I've always felt that it was the lull in Galatians. But uh, I think it was pretty good, you know. But I'm excited to get into 5 and 6 and uh, see things, uh, see, see the rest of this letter through. So thanks for listening, folks. Uh, Happy New Year, and we will uh, talk next week. Thanks a lot. Thanks for all your support and love and encouragement to Revolution. I've gotten some of your Facebook messages uh, letting me know that you appreciate uh, the study, and that really means the world to me. And uh, so I just want to say thank you. The, uh, The encouragement really does help. Thanks a lot. This is Revolution Church.